This presentation is for the Sport and Society Conference. It focuses on the development of a winning team culture, specifically the New Zealand All Blacks rugby team from 1950 to 2010. The research was undertaken by Dr Tom Johnson as part of his doctoral study. My name is Andy Martin and I was Tom's chief supervisor for his research. The focus of the research was to evaluate the winning ethos and organisational culture of the All Blacks between 1950 and 2010. Tom has had an extensive career in business and also a lifetime of rugby experiences. The All Blacks have a remarkable success ratio in test matches of over 75% winning ratio. The focus of the research was also about organisational culture within the team. The research focused on three distinct areas. The, the amateur era, which was between 1950 to 1969. A semi-professional, arguably shamateur period between 1970 and 1989. And the professional era of rugby, which has been the last 20 years. The academic framework for this thesis focused on the work of Edgar Schein. Uh, his work was chosen as it's a seminal work in the area of organisational culture and also provided a simple approach for the research to be founded upon. Schein argued for a three-level model which focused on artefacts which involves rites and rituals, stories and symbols. It also focuses on value, beliefs and core assumptions. The other area of focus was leadership, and in particular the All Blacks leadership was a collective leadership involving not only the coach, but the captain and senior leaders within the team. The research also focused on the macro environment and the changes that, the external changes that influenced the All Blacks over the period of 60 years. Political influences, economic influences, social cultural influences and technological influences. The study design was primarily focused on using an interpretive inductive approach using the case study of the All Blacks, the cross sections of the 60 years, the three different periods and semi-structured interviews involving captains and coaches. The key findings of the research focus on a number of areas. The core assumptions within the team were a pride in selection, a pride in winning, a pride in the legacy. The learning culture was very much focused on one that needed to adapt to change, particularly in relation to the external and internal environment. There was a collective leadership approach which involved the coach, the captain and senior players. The values around the team were very much focused on winning, arguably a fear of losing, and the mateship amongst the team. There were some specific symbols that were important, the jersey with the silver fern across the, across the chest. There were some very specific rites and rituals. The traditional haka that is done before the game is a fairly unique ritual uh, undertaken before each game. Historically, the back seat of the bus has been where senior leaders met and decisions were made. This has been formalised more recently in the formation of Club All Black and a more formal approach where senior leaders are appointed within the team. The implications of this study are threefold. One, a contribution to theory. The, the work around collective leadership and the focus within the All Black team has been published in a journal article. The contributions to practice are the applications of Shine's theory to sport organisational culture. And finally, the contribution to metho methodology has been the rich description from semi-structured interview 
with the experts in this case, the captains and the coaches. As indicated, a number of articles have been published or in press or in review related to this thesis.